right. Cool. How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Good. Great. Good. It's a beautiful day. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, the class that we're going to talk about today is pitching. Okay, so what do you what do you know about pitching? How could you describe pitching? Anybody got any suggestions? It's not chipping. It's not no, chipping. It's not chipping. <laughs> okay. Inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> pitching can be yeah. The 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 thing about um, the pitching game is that it's so extremely valuable for your score. Uh, I played yesterday 18 holes with three ladies and. And I, I just, the thing that just kept resounding in my mind was, hey, they just need to get to be, become better pitchers of the ball. The little chips around the greens, that's when you're in really close and you can take a seven iron or a pitching wedge or any type of club, really, and just kind of bobble it onto the green and have it roll to the pin. Pitching, on the other hand, is anything from a full swing up to that chipping point, okay? So it's a partial swing, and that's really where I think we get the challenge is because, you know, we're really not that accomplished at doing the full swing. So how do we change our full swing into partial swings, and how do we control that, right? So we now have to take a, a little mini swing for a short shot, maybe a half swing or a three-quarter length swing to try to gauge distance. How many people have trouble with gauging distance? Yeah, oh. yeah it's, it's huge. You know, you might think, well, it's simple. If I were just to take a ball and throw it in that direction, I might be able to judge that it could roll that far or bounce that far. So that's a simple big picture. Problem is you have one of these attached to the end of your arm, and, that, and you're trying to swing it. Now, the one thing that I see most people struggle with in pitching is the way they go about striking the ball. So that's kind of what I want to talk about first, is how do you actually strike the ball and how do you swing the club to make the ball travel the di distance and direction that you want. I think when we get in the situation where we struggle is we, we, we kind of attack the ball a little bit too much. There's too much of a pop or too much of a hit to it rather than an actual swing. If, you, if we take the putting swing, a very little putting swing like this, and then we just grow it bigger and bigger, you get an opportunity to see how the, the club could possibly pitch the ball now. All right, so this might be a putt. I've got a putting grip just to kind of remind myself that I'm doing a putting swing. Here's my putting swing. This might be chipping at this point, and then this right here might be pitching because I'm going back halfway versus going back full distance. So what happens is in the pitching game is you have to blend part of your putting and chipping technique into your full swing. And I would go in that direction. I wouldn't take your full swing grip and stance and everything and, and then try to go from this big swing to a smaller swing with all the same type of setup. So that's what we're going to talk about. How do you take your putting technique and make your putting technique bigger so that you have better results with your pitching? All right? So a little, this is my 60 degree. I asked you to bring a pitching wedge in a 60 degree if you have both of those clubs. Um, many beginner golfers just have the pitching wedge up. Then we say, okay, what's the S for? Well, that's for sand, and we don't use it for anything else. Well, you, you can use the sand wedge for pitching, and I've always recommended that uh, as soon as you can get a 60 degree wedge in your hand, that's a good thing too. What you're, de what you're dealing with there is angle the loft. This is 60 degrees from here going backwards. Okay, so this would be 0, 45. So this is actually beyond 45 into that 60 degree range. So if we take a 60 degree club, I've got two different situations here. I've got the rough and I've got the fairway grass. I'm going to show you both of those. They're both exactly the same technique. Most of the time, if you're having to do a pitch type shot over something, you're in the rough. Well, that's good news because then the ball is sitting up a little bit easier. Most of the time, if you have to pitch over a bunker, you're going to have some thicker grass on the back side of that bunker to help you get the ball in the air. So you don't have to stress out about that. And then when you're on the short stuff, you usually don't have much to jump over. That can be an extra challenge when you have a bunker or something in the way and you have to hit off the short grass to jump over that as well. Here's the way you do it. 
if I just take my normal golf grip instead of my putting grip, normal golf grip, set up here like I'm going to hit a little shot and just putt. I know what happened. It sure. jumped. <clears throat> if I had a putter and I was going to putt this, I'll just purposely roll this one. If I just roll it, it goes about the same distance. See how that works? So that's the image that I want you to have is that you're putting from here. And you want to use about the same amount of swing that you would to put it up onto the green. So you've got two hole locations here, one close one and one further up the top of the hill. If I were to now go to the furthest one up the top, all I would have to do is pretend, okay, here's my putt. So I'm going to roll this one again. Here's my putting swing. Right? Roll it, whack it. You guys have all hit the putter, right, from the fairway. It's a lot easier from the short grass than the long grass, but that's what you do. You just kind of whack it up there. And you figure on how much speed to, that's required for that distance. Pitching is no different. I'm going to take now the same technique, same swing, but now I'm going to hit underneath it. I'm going to allow my club to scrape or swish through this rough, and this is what it looks like. Okay, jumps up nice, stops up there somewhere on the green. See the results, the distance, the ball actually went the same. Except obviously if there was a bunker in the way, I wouldn't be able to take out my putter and whack it through the rough. So it's, there, yes. So why do you want to learn to pitch rather than, what is advantage does pitching have over putting? A bunker might be in your way. Oh. Uh, you you got to jump over something. Sometimes you have sprinkler heads in your way, obstacles, any type of obstacle. Um, some golf courses you might, you know, hit off to the side uh, of the green and there might be some little bushes around the, you know, actually on the grass that you might have to jump over. So you definitely need to use the technique. Um, water, anything that's an obstacle that you can't run it through. A lot of times when you've hit it and you've kept it up the short grass and up the fairway, your ball is going to end up in that apron area in the front of the green and you can just take a putter and put it up there. Um, in this situation, I've got this hill. If I can get really good at doing this technique, I'll save a lot of strokes. And I can take it back 20, 30 more yards where when you get back there, it might be a little harder for putting to hit it this far. Because it's very difficult with the amount of resistance that you have in the rough to make that ball run all the way up there. But I make it look pretty simple, right? It's yeah. just swinging, okay? Now what I see in, in as an issue is most people try to kind of hit down on it too much. Mm -hmm. Might have been given some wrong information. You got to hit down to hit up. Um, the bottom of your swing is is an arc, right? It has a shape like this to it. It's just figuring out where to put that bottom. Sometimes you'll put it too early before the ball and you'll hit the ground. Sometimes the arc will be too late and you'll top it and roll it along the ground. <clears throat> the most important thing though is to really simulate that putting stroke. Okay? Let your arms swing past your body like this. Try not to over accelerate. It does take a little bit of practice to control not hitting it hard. That's where we run into trouble is when we kind of lunge at it and jab at it and try to hit it too hard. Don't have to do that at all. Yes. Where would you place the ball in your stance? Same place you put your putter. Oh, okay. Could be right in the middle, could be a little bit further back, could be forward, depending on where that bottom of that arc is. Okay, now I gave you the, the real answer is wherever you play your putter. There's biases, there's tendencies that, are, that support the shot where it's better for you to play your ball closer to your back foot than it is to the front foot. However, playing it toward the front foot also gives you more height. So we're dealing again when we when we do these classes, we're dealing with where your skill level is versus what the shot, is, what you're capable of doing with the shot. Um, the simplest way is to keep the ball right in the center and make and just make a nice easy swing especially from this type of grass. If I come back onto here, again, I can play the ball right in the center.
Okay, get a nice shot that jumps up into the air. The tendency for most people is to run into the ground before the ball. So that's why if you're going to set the ball anywhere, you should probably set it further toward your back foot so that if you have a, an accident of running into the ground first, maybe if the ball is back here, then you'll run into the ball instead of running into the ground. What you might have just noticed on that little shot, though, is how low it went. Right, so I put it back in my stance because I'm trying to play into my uh, you know, beginner skill level, right? I'm playing it back because I run into the ground a lot. So you play into your tendency by playing the ball back. And then what happens is you end up hitting it too low and you don't get that height. So I don't want you to think that you can't play a nice high lofted shot just because, you know, it's, it's simpler for you to play it back and hit the ball first. You're not going to get the result that way, so make sure you play it more in the middle of your stance. Play it right in the center because all you're trying to do is get the club to bottom out this way. Bottom out on the bottom of that arm. Okay, now the 60 degree is what I've been using. <clears throat> you see it jumps the ball up nice and high. Traditionally, you might have used the pitching wedge. And here's what the pitching wedge looks like with the exact same swing. Right, see how it jumps out lower? Mm -hmm. Now depending on the shot, you might have lots of green to work with and you might be able to take a pitching wedge and hit it low and you've got lots of green to work with and it rolls up there just fine. Other shots you might not have much green to work with, so that's where the 60 degree comes in handy. The other part is you're trying to figure out how to control that speed. So most importantly is just to get out and practice and see exactly what your club does with that putting type swing. Okay, if I get out and I do one of these shots, right, and I blade it just a little bit, right, you've, you've done that, I've done that myself, where'd it go? Like 30 yards over the green. What do you think? when it goes over the green, what's the first thing that comes to mind? That I, you miss hit it. Yeah, I miss hit it or hit, hit it, it too, too hard. hard. Yeah, too hard. yeah. Too I, think, I think most people think, oh no, you kind of get a fright because you see your ball flying over the green. Right. First thing you think is, uh-oh, I hit it too hard. And that, that's not the case at all. So then, what's the next shot that you get? Okay, you swing really, really easy, yeah, and then you do go. this. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't get there. So, exactly. yeah, yeah, so it's the interpretation of what's actually happening. <laughs> right? You're analyzing uh, and, and making adjustments based on what you see. And what I believe happens is most people hit a shot like that, fire it over the green, and they make the wrong analysis. You automatically say, uh oh, I hit it too hard. And that wasn't the case at all. You actually hit it with the right amount of speed. It's just a dynamic that happens between the very bottom edge of this club and the middle of the ball. It just rifles off. There, there is no spin and no height to it. So you can't, you can't turn around on the next one and then purposely hit it softer unless you're purposely planning on blading it. <laughs> right? So if you're planning on improving your technique, what you're trying to do is get the center of the club face and the center of the ball to meet. 